you know, when I and try and talk with some of the other nurses here, and they're like, well, you can't save everybody. And they all know what's happening. They all agree with me, and they all just shake their heads. And I'm like, am I the only one who is not a sociopath? I was trying to advocate for my patient and talk to management here and get the care that he needs because he's being medically mismanaged. Um, and I just had a complete fucking breakdown because you know what, my entire proposal got canceled because I you know, wasted my time advocating for a patient who's just gonna die anyway. <sighs> you know, and sure enough, they take the patient away from me. And then almost two hours into the shift, they switch me units. This is exactly what happened at the other hospital when I was advocating for the little Hispanic lady. But these people aren't dying from COVID. Let me give you several examples here. Uh, an anesthesiologist um, intubated the patients, like I think it was right, uh, bran like bronchi and of a patient and they couldn't get the sats up and for about five hours like we were waiting on a chest x-ray to confirm that the placement was wrong and in the meantime while we're waiting for that and we've told the anesthesiologist that it was placed wrong because like literally only one side of his chest is like inflating um he dies okay um a patient had a heart rate of 40 and the resident <laughs> started doing chest compressions on him, which is not what you do. You just externally pace them or you, you know, give him some atropine. And then, you know, I run in there to stop him from doing chest compressions on somebody with a pulse. And then he decides to push Epi. He throws some pads on them, on him to, to defibrillate the guy in bradycardia. Okay, he has a heart rate of 40 in a stable, you know, bradycardic rhythm. We just need to give him some, like some atropine and pace him. He defibrillates him and kills him. And I was literally ran out of like the patient's room to get like the director of nursing who was standing out there. And I'm like, can you stop him? He's going to kill that patient. He's going to kill that patient if he defibrillates him with bradycardia and a heart rate of 40. And the director of nursing just shook his head and I turned around and he killed the dude. Okay, there was a nurse who played, placed an NG tube into, um, into some guy's lungs and filled his lungs with tube feeding. There was a nurse who confused uh, a long-acting ac insulin with a short-acting acting insulin and gave 30 units of a fast-acting insulin and killed the guy. Yeah, it's just here they're just gonna let them rot on the vent. They're medically mismanaging these patients and like, I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not professing to be a doctor by any means. But there's, like I said, basic standards of care that we have to do. Like, when somebody's low on blood, like literally on the brink of a critical low blood level, we should replace the blood. But I asked the residents and they're like, does he have internal bleeding? And I said, no. Then they're like, well, we're not replacing the blood. Well, here's the thing. And these COVID patients, they all eventually need a blood transfusion. Their blood, like, if you don't have enough blood to actually oxygenate your body, the vent settings don't matter, okay? And <laughs> they don't matter because you have no oxygen carrying capacity of your blood, okay? <sighs> I told you about the patient where like all that like purulent drainage just kept seeping into his lungs because the ET tube cuff w was leaking and nobody has a manometer here to check the pressures. And I finally figured that out. And I kept saying, hey, you know what? His white blood cell count is steadily like, you know, we're having a problem with it. Like, do you want to start some antibiotics? No, well, does he have a fever? And I said, no, he doesn't have a fever. They didn't want to start antibiotics. Day shift nurse finally got a chest x-ray. He has full blown pneumonia now. Like I've been telling them this for a while, but because he didn't have a fever, they didn't want to give him antibiotics. Nobody is listening. They don't care what is happening to these people. They don't. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. Like literally some of these people are just on sedation to keep them on the vents. Nothing else. We're not treating the COVID guys. Like 
for real, we're not treating the COVID. You know, every day we try and get these guys off the vents, right? Because, you know, there's criteria for weaning. Every day, the day shift nurse will wean them down, like to like minimum sedation. Every night we come in and we get the same two residents and they fucking max out all the sedation again and undo all the work from the day shift. Then the day shift attending will come in and they'll all do rounds and they'll be like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent. So we had to turn all the sedation on. And I'm like, he wasn't synchronizing with the vent because it's in the wrong vent mode. Everyone here is okay with this. The only way I can kind of put this into context for everybody is, and this is gonna be kind of an extreme example, this is like really the only thing I can come up with, is like if we were in Nazi Germany and they were like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber, I'm the one like there saying, hey, this is not good, this is bad, this is wrong, we should not be doing this. And then everyone tells me, hang in there, you're doing a great job. You can't save everybody. You're, you know, you're amazing. You're a great nurse. Can someone come up with like some type of a solution for me? Cause I'm kind of out of ideas. You know, I, I try and talk with some of the other nurses here and they're like, well, you can't save everybody. And they all know what's happening. They all agree with me and they all just shake their heads. And I'm like, am I the only one who is not a sociopath? To think that this is okay? I mean, guys, they literally don't even know when they're dead. Like... How many times have I told you they've assigned me a dead person? <laughs> like, how long have they been dead? Nobody knows. <laughs> Watched an anesthesiologist place an ET tube and rush for their esophagus and the guy choked to death on his own blood. Ah, COVID didn't place that ET tube incorrectly. Nobody cares because they're all minorities and we're in the fucking hood. You know, and that's just not okay. You know, I grew up really poor. And so I know what it's like to be like completely forgotten and for nobody to advocate for you. So if anyone's got any idea what the hell I can do to save my one black guy before they completely transfer me out of this hospital, that would be great. Because he's mentally there. When he sees us come in, his heart rate and his blood pressure drop up and he doesn't sink with the vent because he can see us. And when we leave, he calms down again. He just physically can't communicate with us. Like I told you, I had Stephanie explain to him what was happening to him because you can't hear me very well through a respirator. Plus, I'm sure that respirator is probably scary. Especially if you're kind of out of your mind from all the sedation. But he's a cab driver and lives a couple blocks away from here. 